the promises that He is here. I, you know, I, I felt Him here this morning, but it's not only feeling Him, there's a theology about that and an understanding that's in your Word and it's in my Word. He says, I promise to send you the Holy Spirit, a Father who will not withhold the Holy Spirit from you. Luke 11 says, if you fathers being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Holy will the Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask? Come on, lift your hands for a moment. Come on, just begin to ask Him. Ask Him. Begin to ask Him. Lift your voice. The only thing stopping you is religion. Just lift your voice. Just lift your voice the way you talk to you to your friends. Just lift your voice. Lord, just say, fill me with fresh fire this morning. Fill me with fresh love. Fill me with a fresh passion. Fill me with a, with a heart for your kingdom. Fill me, Lord, with a passion for lost people to be found in the love of Jesus Christ. Fill me with fire. Fill me with fire. Fill me with fire. Fill me with fire. Burn. Burn like a fire. Oh, burn like a fire in me, Lord. Fill me with your passion. Fill me with fire. Jesus. Jesus. Come on, just lift your voice. Just keep on playing. Just, just lift your voice. Just lift your voice. Speak in, speak in other tongues. Speak in English. Speak in Dutch if you're Dutch. I don't care. Just make a noise. Tadoria seve shanda. Maria so kombro sama. Vililia saria sundo no disiale kemasha. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we bless you. Bodia nasinia so di shekelia madasa. Vilia brodia sane ne deshile du so. Oh, Jesus. You know, the amazing thing was I looked down when I was a kid and I, and I, I thought, I, I guess I'll become like that. And now I'm 60 years old. <laughs> and I'm going, to, it's just a choice. You can, you can just, it's just really a choice. You can either be like that, or you can be still crazy at 60. Or 70. Or whatever. Father, in the name of Jesus, come on. Just lift your voice, lift your voice. I'm not letting you off the hook that easy. There's way too much religion in this room this morning. Come on, lift up the names of your family. Lift up the names of your family. Maybe a husband, maybe a wife, maybe a son or a daughter, maybe a mum or a dad. Come on, lift up the family. Lift up Fano this morning. That extended connections that you have. Maybe some workmates. Oh God, we lift them up to you. We pray for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we want to say thank you. The Lord, that you're going to touch this nation and you are touching this nation. Lord, we want to thank you for that right now. And that you're touching our family. That you're touching our city in Jesus' name. You're touching our church. You're touching the church. Lord, you're touching our connect group and you're causing it to be different in Jesus' precious name. Lord, we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Come on, just sing that light of fire again. Light of fire, light of fire. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. Light a flame in my soul for every eye to see. 
For the sake of the world, burn like a fire in me. sake of the world burn like a fire in me light a flame in my soul for every eye to see for the sake of the world burn like a fire in me oh. For the sake of the world. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever, yeah, that whoever, that whoever. I opened my heart to God at 11 years old. And it seems a long time ago now, but it went like that. It just went like that. It's crazy. You've never given your heart to Jesus. Maybe there's a passion that's just lost. My best birthday gift to you is to go get connected with God again. Don't, don't, don't wrap yourself in the world. I love what J.B. Phillips says in Romans 12, uh, 2. He says, don't allow the world to squeeze you into its mold. Be transformed. Be transformed. Come on up. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not sure whether it was a dream that someone had or not. But as we're praying for the Red Frogs team, I had a picture in my mind. It's a well-known picture of a guy throwing in a life buoy to people who have been shipwrecked and they're at sea. And as, I, as we're praying for the team, I just saw that again and again. And Shannon was leading the charge, throwing in the life buoy. And I was going to share that with her. And, and I had a real sense that, I mean, God was going to amplify her voice that others would hear and be captivated with saving people from ship, lives that are shipwrecked, saving them from chaos, saving them from a sense of hopelessness and a sense of no destiny, a sense of impending doom, basically. And it was such a vivid picture. As we were picking up that song, for the sake of the world, light a fire in me. I realize actually it's a bigger invitation. I realize that the Spirit of God is hovering over this place. And He's inviting you to be a part of the whole movement of God that is starting to increase across this world, which are not so interested with their own lives and their self-sufficiency, but are rather acknowledging of their need to actually be part of a team and to reach out for others that are in being, their lives are being shipwrecked by a chaos. And I have such a sense of God brooding over this place, inviting you. Do you want to be a part of that team? Not for your sake. It's not about you. It's about for the sake of the world. That's the heart of God. It's not just making us feel good and us feeling fulfilled. And for us feeling significant, it's not about that. It's about those whose lives are around us in yeah. chaos and who have no sense of hope or any sense of security or any sense of knowing that God loves them. And I have such a sense of God just inviting you. Will you be a part of that? Will you be a part of it for the sake of the world? I so want you to be a part of that. You know, one of the sad things about that picture was that there were many uh, that were on the boat who couldn't see the lives around them that were being shipwrecked. They just couldn't see it. They, it's like their eyes were blinded. 
And I believe the Holy Spirit is going to open your eyes this morning. So if you'd like that, I just invite you to lift your hand and say, Holy Spirit, I surrender myself to you. I invite you to open my eyes. Help me see people the way you see them. And fill me with your compassion and your grace. Because I don't have enough of my own. And let your love flow through me for the sake of the world. If you're like me, many of you were brought up in Calvinism. And what Calvinism means is that um, it underscored the fact that, um, uh, and there's a biblical truth in this, so I'm not bagging this, but um, that there's a predestination. And so that takes, if you like, the weight off the church to do anything about it. God will do it. And I want to say to you this morning, that is the root of of passionless Christianity. Don't tell the prezies I just said that. <laughs> God is a God that says this. He says, my ear is not deaf that I can't hear. My arm is not too short that I cannot reach. Call unto me. Call unto me. And I want to pray for people this morning. Just in the, you know, I may not get. Yeah, I want to preach on faith this morning, but this is going to take faith too. And you know, but just I don't just don't listen to me this morning. Engage. I, I believe there are people here this morning. You identified something went clunk in your spirit, uh, or ding in your spirit. I don't know what. But um, without people looking around, I want you to look to God this morning and say, Would you take this? Would you take this passionless thing off me? Whatever it might have been, it may be the fact that the Bible says that. You know, that um, hope deferred makes the heart sick. And so we believe for something. I was talking to a young man this week and he believed something. And then he, he full on. And then it, when it didn't come, he, he, it drove him back into addiction and back into pain. But he's come again and he says, it doesn't matter what I feel or what I think or what happens to me. I am going to serve God all the days of my life. And, uh, and he's been doing that and there's been some amazing things happening in his life. And, uh, and that's fantastic, but we have to make a choice for the sake of the world, for the sake of your world. Otherwise, we're going around with blinkers on all the time. So, Father, we just come this morning. Now, I'm not looking around. I've I'm, I'm got my eyes open. I'm not going to fall off the stage. I'm just going to go, Lord, right now, if you lift your hands, you're lifting your hands to the Father right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you passionless Christianity. Religious rigmarole. Forgive us for the times that we have said, Lord, it's just up to you. Whatever God wills. Allah be willed, our bellies be filled. We have Islamicized our Christianity to fatalism. Father, forgive us. And as a church, we call out to you for the sake of the world. And we call out to you and we say, in the name of Jesus Christ, light a fire in us again. Light a fire in us again. Not just of emotionalism, a fire of the Holy Ghost. Not a fire of humanity, a fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your hands. Just begin to allow the Holy Spirit to come on you. Wow, He is, yeah, He's moving here right now. Holy Spirit, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your presence. Jesus said this about faith. He said, if you say to this mountain, be thou removed. And the problem is what we've done is we've said to God, God, remove the mountain. And the text says very clearly, if you speak to the mountain, whatever, what is your mountain today? Is it a mountain of sickness? Is it a mountain of unbelief? Is it a mountain of financial ruin? Of hopelessness, of depression, 
of disease or dilemma. Father, in the name of Jesus, we speak to that mountain. We speak to the mountain of passionless Christianity. And we say in the name of Jesus Christ, move. In the name of Jesus Christ, be uprooted from where you are and go. I can't do that for you. You can hear my words, but you have to take those words. We said a couple of weeks ago, it says when we believe in our heart, amen, it's great to believe in your heart. But when we confess with our mouth, you say, oh, you're just talking about name it and claim it. Yes, I am. Because God links powerfully what we speak about. Will we speak faith or we speak failure? Will we gossip God or we tear down others? God will take our words, us at our words. And we live in that world. Light of fire. Mm. I'm just opening up this altar right now. Um, some of us are on it already. But if um, people need to come this morning and say, God, I'm making a recommitment, not to anybody else, not to a church, but to you. I'm going to start something new. Pete, you were brilliant this morning. That was amazing communion. You heard the passion from Shannon this morning. You know, there's an altar call here right now. And it's an altar call to say, God, I need you. I need fresh fire for the sake of the world. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come. Kiamane na saba ye shamana masa. Dela na la la mama masha. The power of God is here. It's a calling power of God. It's an equipping power of God. Just begin to lift your voice, begin to cry out to God. If we spend the rest of the service doing that, we've done more in church. This is not about someone laying hands on you. This is about you laying hold of God. This is not about someone imparting to you. This is about you taking hold of the garment of faith and saying, God, I need you. I need you to ch bring change in my life. I need you to bring passion again in my life. I need you to bring me past this mountain that I'm going round and round and change me. Jesus, 
David's here this morning, and David S is, and God's called you, um, and I can remember the times God called me, he didn't call me once, he called me, a, called me a million times, and sometimes I responded, but when David was called, he became invincible in faith, he became invincible because the moment he was anointed, that it didn't matter how many giants they threw at him. God's plan would always be worked out. He was going to be the king of Israel. When Abraham was shown that he was going to be the father of nations when he had no children, God looked down through the avenues of time and he looked at him. And he said, I can see your family. But from Abraham's perspective, he saw nothing. And I see God looking down the avenue of time right now. I, I looked at these young people this morning. I looked at them through eyes of faith. And I saw them going out into the four corners of this world. Some of them will go further than others. You know, sometimes I've met people who identify with Thomas, the doubter. I mean, all of us, <laughs> we've all been there. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. We've prayed that prayer. But Thomas traveled the furthest of any of the disciples. I went to his grave in India. The known world, the ends of the earth, when it was written back in the day, the ends of the earth were in Spain. That was the world. And so they traveled with the gospel to the ends of the world, not New Zealand. But Thomas, the doubter, took the gospel and he got as far as India because the call burned in them. I, can you, is this just Sunday morning church? Can you feel the call? Yeah, that's true. There's a call. Yeah. Is this playing church on a Sunday morning? My Lord, this is about the sake of the world. Come on, Thomas. We need to repent, if you're from Invercargill, of seeing Invercargill as a backwater. Because I believe that this city can change nations. Come on. So. Absolutely. I believe people will come to the city just to get something from God. Always believe that. Always believe that. And it's true. We have, we have significant speakers coming who, who speak around the world saying, we want to come. Even this year we've had that come to Australia, I've heard about this church, travel just here to come to the Invercargill church, to this church, and then disappear back to Australia and the States again, because they wanted to think. And he said to me, Darren Begley, he said to me, there is a deep well in this place. And the problem is if you get steak every day, you just despise it. There is a well of anointing. Is it because we're, this is that church? No, don't ever think that. Because Dale aren't going to be here. Dale and I aren't going to be here forever. This is about God. This is about Him. And I caught that fire when I was 11 years old. I was baptized into that fire when I was 17. And Dale and I started going out when we were 17. We've been on a journey for this. Right now after all of these years it just seems like that and I recognize that in a few more years I'll stand in glory and as A.W. Tozer said there will be many Christians that will come and they'll suddenly realize that they could have accessed immeasurable grace immeasurable riches immeasurable kingdoms but they've come like paupers to the throne of grace because they never accessed it. They just left it to God. Father, right now we come. Come on. Thanks, Musos. Come. Just lift it up a little bit. Lift it up a little bit. 
Wow. Elijah called for a musician. And when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon. So Lord, we want to say thank you right now. Let the hand of the Lord come upon every person in this room, in this auditorium. Not only this church, right around the city. Every church in the city. We want to be on fire for God. We want to see a move of the Holy Ghost. Come on, I want you to start crying out to God. Come on, I just want you to start saying, God, I need to settle this in these moments. We've only got a few moments left of this service, but, but we just need to say, Lord, right now, we need to touch something in you. Light a fire again. Light a fire. There once been when I was young, when I was younger, and stuff got in the road. Sin got in the road. Passions that weren't your passions got in the road. I was deflected and dissuaded. I became a rebel rather than a responder. Father, I pray that you would forgive us. Lord, we want a move of your Holy Ghost for the sake of the world. For the sake of the world. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. Thank you for your goodness, Lord. What I, what I want us to do is this. We're going we're gonna to finish in a few moments with a great song, but I want the... You, all right, I just want you to turn. Whoever's on your left, all right, I don't care. And uh, some of you guys in the staff team, just start doing that right now. Others, if you want to come, maybe you've got a prophetic word. Uh, or you, you, you look like you're stuck in the headlights. You all right? <laughs> you okay? Wave at me if you're still there. Hello. Hello. There you go. There you go. Awesome. Thank you. Maybe some of you want to come down and pray for these guys. You go, oh, man, I'm, I'm full of passion. I want to just get that on them. And, um, and, but these guys are full of passion too. I'm looking at their faces. <laughs> and then we're going to sing a great song and go home. Is that good? Yeah, you can go and eat cake then. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Get him up, Shama, kiss him up, Shama, 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 Shama,